<laughs> Found Jonathan Loxer from Free Tronics. Hey. <laughs> and he's got the um, Ardu Sat board, the yeah. satellite board. Yeah, this is the payload processor module, which is one of the parts of Ardu Sat 1 and Ardu Sat X. Um, those are two satellites that are currently at the International Space Station and they're just about to be deployed into orbit. And this is the board that will run experiments. Each one of these little rectangles is a complete uh, microcontroller with all the supporting parts. And so each one of these is essentially equivalent to an Arduino Uno. In fact, it's running the Arduino bootloader. And this chip up here is a supervisor processor, mm -hmm. um, which talks to each of them through multiplexes. So as far as they are concerned, they're an Arduino plugged into a computer and the supervisor can load new sketches onto them and each one of these has access to all of the sensors on the satellite right. and um, there's also some storage and various other things on here mm -hmm. and the idea is that each of these runs totally independently so you can have 16 experiments running simultaneously and they don't need to have any knowledge of each other right. and um, the idea with that is that we can amortize the cost of the satellite across a whole lot of different people mm -hmm. And uh, I've got a few other boards here as well. So, just as an example, this is a little test stack that I've been playing around with on my bench. And this is representative of about the size of the total of the final satellite. It's a 10 centimeter cube. And you can see in the middle there is the payload processor module. It's another one of these. There are currently five of these boards in existence. Two are here, two are in orbit right now, and another one is over in California at the ground station. Fantastic. Um, this on the top is a prototype of a satellite power supply module. Mm -hmm. So it's got um, input from solar cells so it can charge. Um, yep. It's got a management processor so that it can do things like uh, measure current consumption and battery state. And um, so it's got a couple of high current and switch mode power supplies on here which supply power to the rest of the satellite through the bus. The satellite has a stacking bus that you can see there. So basically the idea is that it's like a stack of pancakes. So the satellite itself is just a series of modules that you build up and they all sit on the same stacking bus. And how do you keep it warm? Because it's in space. Yeah, well, <laughs> the interesting thing is that um, keeping it warm is not, is not really so much a matter of space being cold, it's more a matter of how do you control the heat. Um, on, there are really three ways that temperature can be transferred mm -hmm. between different parts of a system. And um, there is no convection because there's no air obviously, but you still have radiation. So mm -hmm. if you have hot spots you can radiate heat. Uh, basically the thermal profile of the satellite once it's in orbit, mm -hmm. um, it orbits about every 92 minutes mm -hmm. and it goes from about minus 40 degrees to about plus 80 degrees over that cycle. So you, basically the board is slammed down to minus 40 degrees yep. and then it's slammed up to plus up. 80 right. every hour and a half. So okay. it goes but through some pretty still severe... Within, like, it's still it's within still tolerance within of... within yeah. a designable range. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, it's not ridiculous. So yeah. the problem is that when it's on the dark side of the Earth, so when it's in shadow, mm -hmm. it'll be radiating heat and then once it comes into sunlight, it starts absorbing heat. Right. And it's just a matter of managing that. Excellent. Um, the major problem is yep. batteries, because I mean, we all know batteries don't like getting cold. Mm -hmm. So what a lot of satellites do is have heating coils under the batteries. So when they're in the, on the dark side, they heat up and they keep the batteries warm. Cool. And what's the uplink to this thing? How do you, how does it communicate back to um, There is a radio module, I don't have on this particular stack, but the satellite itself uses 2 meter and 70 centimeter amateur um, transceiver uh, modules in it. So, uh, in fact, all of that information is published so if you've got the right gear you can listen in on the telemetry it's not encrypted or anything and how do they deploy it do they just toss it out the window almost <laughs> um, they are deployed using a device called a p-pod which, um, which stands for poly pico satellite orbital deployer and it's basically a big box with a spring in it yeah. and a door on the front <laughs> yeah, right. so, so what they do is the um, the cubesats go inside the p-pod yeah. uh, which is mounted on a sled on the end of a robotic arm on the space station yeah. so they basically point the arm in the right direction then release the door and yep. the spring pushes them out. Pushes it out? Yeah. And that's it? That's it. Awesome. So the space station itself is travelling at about 28,000 kilometres an hour yeah. in its orbit. So they um, they take on the same velocity basically as the space station. Right. And, and then the orbit decays over about six months or so. Oh, six months. Yeah. Okay. They've got no propulsion yep. so they can't actually change their orbit right. but they have orientation control um, using it. things um, called magnet talkers 
coils, which is basically three big coils. So they react against the Earth's magnetic field. So essentially, it, it just acts wow. like a compass Oh, because needle. there's no friction. That's right, there's no friction. There's no friction. So all you do is energize the coil and you can rotate the oh, human no in the way. Like. Yeah. Oh. It's one of those things that when you hear about it, it's like, oh, shit, it's so course, obvious. Of course. And I wouldn't have thought of it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah, with Magnetor, because you can get about plus or minus five degrees pointing accuracy. Yep. Wow. And, um, there are and some you could do that for any mass in theory. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Right? Exactly. Right. But they don't do that on yeah, that's, spacecraft, that's, do they? No, that's, that is oh, done on, that's on, on the satellites. It. Oh, on, on satellites. Um, otherwise, right. it's done a, a, with um, reaction wheels. So basically right. a motor with a mass on it, and you spin the wheel, and then the, um, the spacecraft rotates in the opposite direction. Here I was thinking that they all use hydrazine, mm. you know, fuel no. for, the, <laughs> for the orientation. No, but well, one of the limitations yeah. with CubeSats is for yeah. safety reasons they don't like you sending up any kind, anything that could be explosive or dangerous in any way. So uh, they have to go up totally inert, so they're not allowed to be powered up until they, after they have been deployed. All right, interesting. Does that only apply to CubeSats? Only applies to um, the little players, or it, do the big really players get a free on, pass? Probably. No, it really depends on how the deployment is happening. Yeah. So the thing is that CubeSats are pretty much second-class citizens when it comes to space tech. Yeah. So they're hitching a ride with other missions. If you're the primary mission, then you can specify what you want, and um, and it's done to suit your requirements. Got it. There are some CubeSats now that are experimenting with active propulsion systems as well. Mm -hmm. And people can upload their own sketches to this and yeah, can Exactly, it? that's right. Fantastic. So there's a sketch in space. <laughs> yeah. So there's a software tool that um, it runs in your browser. So it's an IDE in the browser, and you can plug your own Arduino into your laptop, test that your experiment works, and then there's a little drop down, and, and basically it says deploy to. You can deploy to your Arduino or deploy to satellite. <laughs> <laughs> it sends it via the internet to the ground station and it's then uplinked to the satellite uh, and then it's loaded onto one of these yep. processes and executed and then the results are sent back to you. Did anyone think about putting a camera on it so that you can see yep. real time that your LED's blinking? <laughs> no, um, there are cameras on the satellite but they're not pointing at the board. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> not pointing back at itself. <laughs> Excellent, thanks John. Hope thanks, it works. Tom. So it's been so deployed in the next... Well, what? we don't exactly know. It's in the work queue for the astronauts once right. they get around to it. The way it works is there's no specific schedule. They have yep. a list of things to do and they get through a certain number each day. Got so it. sometime in the next month or two, they'll be deployed. Fantastic. All right, good luck. Thanks. Thanks.